So we've got y equals x. We know that y equals x is a linear function. Passes through, and these are the reference points, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Please note that the reference points are labeled on the reference graph. Please note, you have been handing in some of you graphs that have not been labeled. You will no longer get credit for anything that's not labeled. You need to be labeling your graphs. Please put reference points on the reference graph. These are the three I would like you to know. I don't particularly want you to know other reference points. There are an infinity of points on this graph. I'd like you to know these points, and there's a reason for it. Hey, Garrett, how are you? Cool. I'm just wondering because like everyone else is furiously writing and you're just like staring, smiling. So it's good to see you, Gary. Welcome back. Okay, the domain. The domain of this function is what? What are all the possible x values, Mystique? All real numbers. And so we're going to say that domain is negative infinity to infinity because remember we always write domain in interval notation. What about the range, Lauren? What can you say about the range here? Yeah, if domain is going this way and all the x values are covered, Lauren says the range is going this way and we can produce all these negative y values and all these positive y values. So she says that the range is negative infinity to infinity. Okay. When is this function increasing, Elizabeth? Yes. That's right. We said you know a function is increasing when it has a positive slope. When is this function increasing? <laughs> when does this function have a positive slope? Only one point? What's the slope of y equals x here? Couldn't hear you. No, 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 no. y equals mx plus b. Remember this one? What's this represent? Cool. So when I see y equals x, what's the slope number? One, is it positive one or negative one? Great. Is that slope number positive? Is it positive one only in some places, or is it a positive one slope everywhere on that line? Yes. And therefore, what can we say about when is y equals x increasing? You got it. Good learning. Okay, so this function is increasing. Increasing on negative infinity to infinity. And when is this function decreasing, Polina? Never, because this function is always increasing. Okay, next function, y equals absolute value of x. y equals absolute x. This function looks in part like y equals x, except the part of y equals x that's down here has been reflected up, and so we get this characteristic V shape. We still have the point 1, 1 as a reference point. We still have the point 0, 0 as a reference point, but also over here, we've now got negative 1, not negative 1, but negative 1 positive one. These are our three reference points. Any questions about the shape of this graph or its reference points? Excellent. What can we say then about its domain? Alex, what's the domain of y equals absolute value of x? Domain represents all the possible x values that we can plug into this function. Can you think of a number that you can't plug in there? Uh, 
can I plug in negative 1 and get a y value out? Yeah. So is negative 1 part of the domain, part of the set of inputs? Okay. So domain all the numbers we can plug into the function. Domain is all the inputs. If you see the, that was exciting, point on the graph, there must have been an input there. For example, if I plug in a 1, behold, a function value. But not just these three reference points. There's an infinity of points marked here. For example, is this x value going to work? Sure, it produces this y value. Is this x value going to work? Sure, if I extend this line, I'll touch it at this x point. How about over here in negative land? Can I plug in this x value? How about this x value? So what can you tell me about the domain for this function? It is all real numbers. The domain is negative infinity to infinity. But what about the range here, Emma? Zero to infinity. A nice person came up to me this morning and said, Mr. Kukla, how do I determine range? And what was it that I said? I'm looking at Mr. Snyder because he was the nice person. Dramatic aside, it's important to own the knowledge the answers to the questions that you yourself posed for longer than an hour. What ho! I only do range by looking at the graph. I look at the graph and I see the lowest y value on the graph is a y value of zero. I'm not reading this way, I'm reading this way. My lowest y value is 0. See the closed circle? 0 is included. So this presents with a bracket. Any questions about that? Elizabeth, how do I know when a function is increasing? Yes, which says what about its slope? Sweet, tell me here when this function is increasing. Yes. This function is increasing on 0 to infinity. Paulina, when is this function decreasing? I'm sorry, what now? I'm sorry, what now? Are you starting over here and heading to zero and saying infinity to zero? Oh, you said negative infinity to zero. I didn't hear the negative. Yes, thank you. Negative infinity to zero. Very nice. Any questions about increasing and decreasing here? All right. Let's move on. Y equals X squared is next, I believe. Yes, it is. Our graph has exactly the same reference points as y equals absolute x, but it has a different shape. So not only do I need to learn the reference points for each 
reference graph, but I also need to learn the shape of each reference graph. Any questions about this? What can we say its domain would be? Pablo? Bless you. <laughs> domain, negative infinity to infinity. Anthony, tell me the range. Yes, will I use a parenthesis or a bracket on the zero? A bracket because that value of zero is included. Nice. Hey, Elizabeth. When is the function increasing? When it goes up. When is that? When it has a positive slope. When is that? Good job. Nice. I think you've got it. Paulina, decreasing? Thank you. Any questions about this reference graph, sir? Well, that's a really good question. Like, would you want to put it here arbitrarily? Okay. Because some people want to put it over here arbitrarily. And then we run into the situation, how can it be both a positive slope and a negative slope at that one point? And in fact, it turns out, if we really want to talk about slopes at points, the slope at zero here is zero slope, neither a positive number nor a negative number. So I don't include it. Okay. All right, next, we've got y equals x to the third. y equals x to the third. You will notice that y equals x to the third contains the same reference points as y equals x. I need to know more than the reference points. I need to know the shape of the graph that goes through those points. What can we say about the domain here, Sarah? Wow, I've seen that movie a lot today, haven't I? And it's true, most of our reference graphs have a domain of all real numbers. What about a range here? What can we say about the range? Shannon? The y values go from way down there to way up there. The y values go from negative infinity to infinity. Nice. You can do this. Slope positive. Uh -huh. Going up. When? Am I going up over here? How about over here? How about here? Still going up? Am I going up? Is it going up? It's really hard to do this without looking. Is it going up? So when is this function increasing? Good. Very good. Hey, and remember, Elizabeth, these same reference points went with y equals x, and y equals x was always increasing too. And then I said, hey, Paulina, when is this decreasing? And you said never. Just like for y equals x, she said never. Okay. All right. Square root of x. y equals square root of x. This is our first function with a restricted domain. We've been saying anything under square root can't be negative. I can be equal to zero. I can put positive numbers in. I cannot put negative numbers in. Our reference points are zero, zero, 
one, one, which are very familiar to us. And we're going to add a third point here, four, two. What can we say about the domain, Lindsay? Morgan, what can we say about the range? And remember, when we look at this, Alex, domain, we're reading this way, and range, we're reading this way. So if I had this graph, for example, a transformed square root of x graph, um, so that this point was 1, 2, then I would say that the domain starts at this x value and goes over 1 to infinity, but that the range starts at this y value and goes up, and so the range here would be 2 to infinity. Any questions about reading domain or range off the graph? Okay. Cool. Increasing. Mystique, when is this increasing? I'm sorry, when? Zero to infinity. And Paulina says never, decreasing. Okay. Cubert of X. This graph has the same reference points, but a different shape than y equals x, and y equals x to the third, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1. Please watch out that when I ask you to graph this on Monday, you don't graph y equals x to the third. This is the most common pair that people mix up. So pay careful attention. This one is concave down here. This one is concave up over here. Y equals X to the third, let's do that in red, remember looked like this. This one is X to the third. This one is cube root of X. We know that the domain for cube root of X is negative infinity to infinity. We know that the range for cube root of x is negative infinity to infinity. We know that this function, because it always has a positive slope, is always increasing, and it is never decreasing. Any questions about cube root of x, Ryan? Okay, anyone else? All right. Two more, and then quiz. Y equals 1 over X. This is an interesting graph. We have a vertical asymptote at X equals 0. We have a horizontal asymptote at Y equals 0. We bend to the asymptotes and pass through 1, 1. We bend to the asymptotes and pass through negative 1, negative 1. The domain of this function is all numbers except what, Christian? Right, because I can't have a 0 in the denominator. So negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. Hey, Mr. Steiner, why isn't there a bracket here on zeros? Couldn't hear you. Can't reach it. Can't include zero. It's the one number I can't include. I can't have zero there. So don't put a bracket there. Okay. What about the range? What can we say about the range? All the possible Y values. Are there any Y values I can't have, Jeff? I have this positive y value and this positive y value and this positive. I'm sorry, what? 
I have this negative value and this negative value and this negative value. What y value can't I have? Zero. See the horizontal asymptote? I'm not crossing that in this problem. So we say that the range is also negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. Okay. And now what about decreasing? When is this function decreasing, Paulina? I don't think I could hear you. Let me ask it this way. Am I decreasing here? Do I have a negative slope here? How about over here? And here? And here? And here? How about here? And here? And here? And here? So what are you going to tell me about decreasing? Negative infinity to, can it be zero? No. Zero union zero to infinity. And then, Elizabeth, when is this graph increasing? When is it going up? Never. Good. And the last one we talked about was y equals int x. Your book likes this. It's our step function. It starts at 0, 0, goes over 1, goes up 1, goes over 1, goes up 1, We can also go down one and back one forever. Any questions about that graph? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any, dude. I got this picture, and that's all I'm clutching to here. I remember that the closed circle goes at zero, and the open circle goes at the other end of the segment. And then I just remember over one, up one, over one, up one. The domain turns out to be all real numbers here. The range, I'm not even going to try and write down because it's only these integer y values. I don't know how to write the, here, here's the range. The range is the set of integers, which is just, like, what am I supposed to do with that, Mr. Kukla? And I shrug at you, so let's just not worry about the range here. When is this function increasing? Well, it doesn't appear to have a positive slope anywhere. It doesn't appear to have a negative slope anywhere, and yet it seems to be going up. Whoa! So don't worry about that. Really, I just want you to be able to construct the picture and say, oh, that's not absolute value of x. Okay? All right. Let's do quiz. Um, I put stickers on quizzes that are A's or A pluses. So uh, congratulations if you got sticker. Ryan. Are we with what now? This, um, well, we're going over the quiz that I don't think you took yet. That would be fabulous. Sarah, Shannon, Emma, Lauren, so close to a sticker. Christian Mackenzie. I can't find a fox, says Pablo, and Jason is sad about that. There you go. Morgan, Claudio, Lindsay. Nice job, sticker girl. Yes, fabulous you. Yes, that would be great. If you have not taken the quiz, will you please step out for a few minutes? Louisa and no Marissa. Anyone not get their quiz back? Right there. 
Right. So you're, you can hang, but yeah. Anyone else? Everyone got? Okay. Fabulous. Carrot, don't worry. But you got to make it up sometime. All right. Okay. Um, what is it you're supposed to do according to the rules and procedures if you aren't happy with a quiz or test score? Since the class in the rules and procedures states that there's no retests in this class, I'm sure that's not what you're going to do. That's always a good idea. But what I'm referring to is talk to Mr. Kukla. Curling up in a ball, not going to help. Hoping it goes away, not going to help. Screaming. Maybe for a minute, probably not going to help in the long run. Coming in, talking, figuring out what happened, coming up with a plan, going from there. Okay? Really. A low score means only what you've been doing wasn't successful. That's all it means. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you're not working hard. It just means what you've been doing didn't work yet. And so we need to figure out both what content skills you're missing, but also how to better prepare for the next one. Because just like I said the little CFA was preparation for the big 60-point quiz, well, I think the 60-point quiz is preparation for the 100-point test that's coming on the 31st. And I would love it if everyone was at a B or better by then. But that's going to take some people changing stuff. And I will be honest, me at 17, the reason I failed math twice, I didn't change anything. I didn't even change from one year to the next how I approached the math class. And guess what? Nothing changed. I failed it again. But I will also tell you that I have seen many a student who, when they changed their approach to the class, lo and behold, their grade went up to exactly where they wanted it to be. In some cases, even higher than they expected it to be. But it kind of depends on, hello, that one's yours. That's mine. Excellent. Uh, it kind of depends on what you do. Second thing I want to say about assessments, don't come to me for a calculator. Don't come to me for a calculator on assessment day. Don't. You need to have a calculator on assessment day if you want a calculator. Okay? All right. And it's not that I don't love you, but just like you wear pants to school, you should be bringing a pencil or a pen and a calculator on an, a day when you have an assessment, period. Okay. Next, um, questions. Any questions from the first page? Yes, ma'am. Number three. Okay, so we know that I'm supposed to replace all the x's with one-third. I get 6 over one-third squared minus 1 over 27. I get 6 over 1 ninth minus 1 over 27. Mrs. Rowan told me in the seventh grade I need to make a common denominator here. And so I now have 6 over 3 27 minus 1 27, or 6 over 2 27. Some people thought that was a number that they should leave on their quiz. Ew, stinky cheese. You try and give that to your parents for Christmas, and they're just going to say, no, I don't want that present. No, instead, remember what Mrs. Rowan said. She said 6 divided by 2 over 27, that's the same as 6 times 27 over 2. And look, I can't even cancel a 2 here. 3 times 27 is 81. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. No? No. The only reciprocal negative are perpendicular slopes. That's the only time in all of high school math we ever have that. Okay. Any other questions from the front page? Yes, ma'am. Number four, find the domain. Sarah, what can't I have in a denominator? I can't have a zero. So this stuff, A minus X, can't be zero. A can't equal x. This is what I can't have. 
on a number line, I can't have that. But what can I have? If that's the one number I can't have, what other numbers can I have? All these numbers. What about these numbers over here? I can have all of those numbers. And so then my domain is negative infinity to A union A to infinity. Any questions about number four? Okay. Any other questions from the first page? Going once, going twice. Back of the first page. Yes, sir. Did you say nine? Okay. What, uh, what was your answer to this one? Couldn't hear you. I didn't answer it. Okay. So let's try y-axis symmetry. And the test for y-axis symmetry is to plug in a negative x for y-axis symmetry. So I get negative x squared plus negative xy plus y squared equals 0. I simplify. Is this our original expression? Yes or no? No. So no y-axis symmetry. What about x-axis symmetry? With x-axis symmetry, I plug in negative y. So I have x squared plus x times negative y plus negative y squared equals 0. Or x squared negative times positive is negative. Negative times negative is positive. Is this the same as our original? So do we have x-axis symmetry? No. So then we'll test origin symmetry. Origin symmetry, we plug in negative x and negative y. So when I go to plug in a negative x and negative y, plus negative x, negative y, plus negative y squared equals 0. This becomes this. Negative times negative is this. Negative times negative is this and that. Do we have origin symmetry? Behold, we have run the symmetry test. Any other questions from this side? Yes. Six. Find the zeros. Find the zeros is a synonym for what, Lindsay? Find the x-intercepts. And to find an x-intercept, I need to do what? Set what equal to zero? <laughs> yep. Set y equal to zero. So zero equals 6x squared minus 19x plus 10. I need to solve this quadratic. I reach for factoring first because I'm comfortable with factoring. If you're not comfortable with factoring, I guess you have two choices here. Either you can come in and get some more practice on factoring, and we'll do some more factoring, and you can get comfortable with it, which would be really good this year, or you could bust out quadratic formula here. Okay, so factoring. I'm looking for the factors of 60 that add up to negative 19. I say, oh, negative 4 and negative 15 will work for that. So I replace this B term with these factors. 6x squared minus 4x minus 15x plus 10. I group in pairs. I can factor a 2x out of each of these, and I'll be left with 3x minus 2. From the next pair, I can factor out a negative 5 and I'll be left with 3x, oops, I'll be left with 3x minus 2. I notice I have one term, two terms. I can factor out this common factor from each of those terms. What remains when I do that is this 2x and this minus 5. 
there's my factored form. Remember, all of this was equal to zero, so what's the last step you need to do, Lindsay? 3x minus 2 equals 0, x equals 2 thirds, 2x minus 5 equals 0, x equals 5 halves. Any questions? Any other questions from this uh, page? Going once, twice. Puppy stickers, third side, starting with problem 10. Any questions on 10 through 13? Yes, sir. 12, difference quotient. We're given that f of x is negative 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. We are asked to do f of x plus c. How do I find f of x plus c, Jeff? No. Nice. Negative 3x plus c squared plus 2x plus c minus 5. Negative 3x squared plus 2xc plus c squared, because I'm foiling here, plus 2 times x plus c minus 5. So I end up with f of x plus c is equal to negative 3x squared minus 6xc minus 3c squared plus 2x plus 2c minus 5. Jeff, any questions about finding f of x plus c? We're not done with the problem. I'm just asking you, do you have any questions so far? OK. Remember, our difference quotient said this, f of x plus c minus f of x all over c. We found this. Can you find that for me now? I already have it f of x is negative 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. What am I supposed to do with those two things that I've just found? When I subtract, these cancel, these cancel, these cancel. I'm now left with negative 6xc minus 3c squared plus 2c. Any questions about that? What's the last step, Jeff? Divide by c. I need to divide by c. That doesn't mean canceling these out. If you do that, I chase you with a pool noodle. It means factor a c from all of these. Negative 6x minus 3c plus 2, and then cancel. You need to cancel the c from all of them not just haphazardly from one of them. Any questions about that, Jeff? Okay, anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Did you say 10? Okay, perpendicular to 3x plus 2y equals 2. So how do I find the slope of that? kind of crowded over there now. No. Elizabeth told me earlier today that slope is the number in front of x when I've solved for y. Is this solve for y equals? No. So let's solve for y equals. Two y equals negative three x plus two. Now divide everything by two. Y equals negative three halves x plus one. The slope is three? Question mark. Negative three over two. So I had to solve for y equals. What would the perpendicular slope be? Uh huh. And what else, Lindsay? Flip it and change the sign. This is the only place I flip and change the sign. So there's my perpendicular slope. I'm also given a point, 6, 2, and I need to write the equation. So y equals mx plus b is what I noticed most people reaching for. 2 equals 2 thirds times 6 plus b. 
I can cancel here. I get 2 equals 4 plus B. I get B equals negative 4. Am I done at this point? Nay, say I. I haven't written the equation of the line. I need to do Y equals 2 thirds X minus 4. And then I go back and I read the problem and say, does it say anything about standard form? No, it just says write the equation of the line. So I'm done. Any other questions from this page? Any questions from the last page? Yes, please. How are we supposed to write 15? Yes, please. Oh, that would help if I read the problem correctly. It's what now? Oh, because I can't subtract. Thank you. I just needed to identify my mistake. Yes, showing the steps. Boy, my grandfather was right. Okay. Thank you, Alex. And was that LJ? Who was that over here? Was it Antonio? Thank you very much, Antonio. Okay, minus two. Good. Okay, and then the last page with their questions. How do I write 15? Um, well, I need to use the equation of a circle, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. I have to remember that the center is hk and that r is the radius, that this is radius squared. Do I know the center? No. I know the endpoints of the diameter are located here at 3, 5 and over here at 1, negative 1. What's the relationship of the center to those two points? Midpoint. So this was Mr. Kukla's excuse to work in a midpoint formula problem. This plus this divided by 2 is 2. This plus this divided by 2 is 2. So the center is located at 2, 2. Now what about the radius? Is the radius the distance from here to here? From here to here. Okay, so that's going to be square root of 3 minus 2 squared plus 5 minus 2 squared, which gives me square root of 1. 3 squared is 9. I get square root of 10. This distance is root 10. But what will I put in the formula? Will I put root 10? Root 10 squared or 10. So then my equation should be that. Joe! Any other questions from the quiz? What are you supposed to do if you don't like your score? Good. Don't let it fester. Come talk to me. Bet there's a bunch of people here at lunch talking to me. I'll be here after school as well. If you're a fourth period aide, you could come on up, fourth period. I'm going to be here part of the, the second half of the period, not the first half of the period. Monday morning, I'll be here. Come on in and talk to me. Okay? Okay. Fabulous. Let's get the nice people who are patiently waiting outside. ACT questions. Thank you for your patience. Sorry. I thought about leaving you in the room, but you felt like you should leave, so I said you should leave. But otherwise, I, you might have benefited from that. Okay. So remember I said that we will all be taking a practice AP uh, ACT in the spring because juniors are required to take the ACT now uh, in TUSD. So I want to make sure that everyone feels as comfortable as we can with this stuff. Any questions from the first packet at this point? Hi. Eight. I thought three was the hardest problem, but I'll do eight. Okay. Eight. 
Um, an aquarium contains dolphins, sharks, and whales. Oh, but wait, it says that X is the number of whales. Dolphins, sharks, and whales. Second sentence, there are twice as many dolphins as whales. So the number of dolphins is twice the number of whales. That's the second sentence. And eight fewer sharks, eight fewer sharks than the number of dolphins and whales combined. Dolphins and whales. Now, this is dolphins and whales equals the number of sharks, but I have eight fewer sharks than the number of dolphins and whales. So how am I supposed to represent that, Christian? Do you want a minus eight here, or do you want a minus eight here? I, I wasn't sure what you said. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to read it one more time. Eight fewer sharks than dolphins and whales combined. So if I think of the number of sharks as being 20, eight fewer than the number of whales and... No, I think the minus eight goes on the other side. Number of whales combined, eight fewer than that is the number of sharks. Okay. Yes, please. Sure, it's on the tablecloth table. You could also get it from your class website, Chapter 1, <clears throat> through Student View. But I'm glad you thought to ask about that. Okay, so then finally it says, if there are X whales, which following represents the number of sharks? I want to know what the number of sharks is, but I only want Xs over here. Is there something I can replace this D with, Claudio? Yeah, so D equal plus 2X minus 8. Oh, sorry, I replaced the wrong way. 2X plus X minus 8, or the number of sharks is 3X minus 8. Okay, okay. Should we go through answers? Because maybe we think we got them correct and we didn't? Yes. I can do number three. I found number three quite horrible and definitely not intuitive. And what I want to say is you can get a fine score on the ACT without being able to do number three. All right. So here's what I want to do. Instead of Zoe making a common denominator, I want to make a common numerator. I know, you never make a common numerator. I want to multiply by 3 over 3. I want to multiply by 3 over 3. So now this expression is going to read 3 over 33, 3 over n, 3 over 27. And they ask us, what values can n take? Can n be 27? No, it has to be a not 27 number. Can n be 33? No, it has to be a different number than that. And so it turns out that I want numbers in between 27 and 33. Like 28 will work, and 29 will work, and 30 will work, and 31 will work, and 32 will work. There are five numbers that will work here. I agree. It's a crazy problem. And again, I would say, yeah, I wouldn't even bother to, I mean, I would just guess and move on. And, yeah. Any other questions that we should address? Yes. Did you say one? One. Third of the people are anthropologists. Half of the people are biologists. And the remaining 12 participants are chemists. Now, that's interesting. A third are biologists, and a half of the number of people are, er, are, I'm sorry, a third are anthropologists, half are biologists. 
if we add up all those people together, that's a third of the people plus half of the people. What amount of the people at the conference do we have? Thank you very much for making a common denominator and adding those together. You have five-sixths of the people. Five-sixths of the people are biologists or anthropologists. What portion remains who aren't biologists or anthropologists? If five-sixths of all the people there are biologists and anthropologists, how, what percent, what amount, not 12, I'm looking for something else here, represents the number of chemists? Right. One-sixth is left over of the number of people represents chemists. But the number 12 also represents the number of chemists. So when I multiply both sides by 6, I get x equals 72 chemists, or x equals 72 people at the conference. And they say total number of participants at the conference, 72. Yes, please. No. This is 2 over 2. This is 3 over 3. So we've got 2, 6, x plus 3, 6, x. So that's going to give me 5, 6, x. Okay? I'm sorry, what? 2 over, oh, thank you. 2 over 2. Okay, yes, please. 21. Okay, so TV set is discounted 20%. So I pay 80% of the original price. And I'm not paying 20%, I'm just paying 80% of the original price. But then there was another discount the next day, another 25%. Am I paying, what percent then am I paying if I'm taking 25% away? 75% on the second day. So I'm paying 75% of this amount of money. So 0.75 times 0.8 and when I did this, I got 0.6x. Now, what this tells me, Sarah, is what I ended up paying was 60% of the original price. So if I'm only paying 60%, how much was my discount? 40%. And so this is a 40% discount. This is B, 40%. Again, I'm not sure that a lot of these problems are hard math, but it's not math that I've done a lot of recently. Like that problem, that problem I remember from the eighth grade. And I don't know that I've done that problem since the eighth grade. And that's been a long time. So you may like all that knowledge might be somewhere far, far away, and you just need to become reacquainted with it through this process of review. Any other questions from the packet? Okay. I'm going to read some answers so you can check your work. First page, starting with problem 17. 80. 18. 8.4, or G. 19, D, 4. And 20, 105. Any questions on that first page? Going once, twice. We're flipping pages. Okay. Number one, we did. Thank you, Polina. Number two. Oh, man, I had to think about this one. I guess this one was getting ready, getting me ready for how tough number three was, but I thought it was kind of mean to stack these tough problems up front. We'll produce an odd number for any integer, h. So here was my thinking about that. I was thinking about squaring some numbers because all of these take a number and then square it. But I thought, you know, what I need to do is square a number, but wait a minute. 
when I square numbers, some of them are even, like 4 squared is 16, but 3 squared, that's not even. That's odd. And then I'm going to add 1 to it. So if I add 1 to an odd number, I'm going to get an even number, and this says I'm supposed to get an odd number. So I'm trying to find out something that if I add 1 to it, it becomes odd. What must it have been before I added 1 to it? Oh, even. So I'm looking for something that will always generate an even number. A squared doesn't always generate an even number. 7 squared is 49. That's not even. But if I shove a 2 next to that A squared, suddenly then any number that I square becomes an even number. And then I add 1 to make it an odd number. So H is the answer there. I will take a few more questions on Monday. You have book work homework tonight. So do the book work homework. Also remember to review for our little quiz on reference graphs on Monday. You must have your reference graphs on Monday. We need them for what we're doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yes, LJ. We did hand in the review worksheet yesterday. You should if you aren't using it anymore. You know, if you didn't like your score on the quiz and you can't talk to me today, you might want to spend some time looking at the quiz, seeing if you can identify your mistakes. Yes? It's, no, I thought 9 was the worksheet, the, the quiz review worksheet. I thought we were on 11. I think it's 11. I'm checking right now. On the back, 11. Yep. Page 60, uh, 71. Thank you, Alex. That's not us. That's No, we have book work tonight. That was the yesterday one. Should I put the yesterday one on the card? Okay. Yesterday one on the card. Yesterday one on the card. This is the real yesterday one on the card. Yay, Sarah. Yes, please. I'm here after school. Sweet. And perpendicular? And then a little bit of the difference. Difference quotient? Uh huh. Sure. Like the foiling and yeah. subtracting? Sure, we can practice that. All right. Okay, cool. Excellent. I'm here at lunch. Of course. Do we want to talk about being in the class? Don't be scared when there's a cloud of people wanting to talk to me about their quiz. You know, based on our conversations, which may or may not be anything, based on our conversations, I'll say intellectually, you can do this class. Yeah. You may just need some accommodation and support as the rest of your life allows you to do this class. Yeah. And I would encourage you to do this class if you can. Yeah, that's... I'm, I'm glad we're in a similar. I, yeah. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Yep. Yeah. What do you mean? Didn't you get it on the group me? Yeah. Sure. It was also on your. Uh, it's also on your class website. Oh, man, Kukli, you're killing me. Dismiss. 